Roll for Romance is a podcast featuring five friends horny for D20. And welcome to Roll for Romance, a 5e D&D podcast where we are finding love in all the role places. I'm your DM, Emily, and with me, I have four amazing players. We have Sarah as Lanaver, the Aladrin Bard. Desiree as Hilrana, the Earth Genasi Druid. Ferris as the Tiefling Warlock. And Miles as our ASMR Paladin. Last time we met our PCs and they got involved with either the bridal shower or the bachelor party for an upcoming royal wedding. Lanny and Hilvrana were involved with the bridal shower, Lanny as a musician, and Hilvrana as a party crasher. She was pretending to be the groom's cousin who ended up being sick and wasn't able to attend. Meanwhile, Ferris and Miles were both invited to the bachelor party. Ferris as a fortune teller and Miles as a self-proclaimed party planner and guest. Many different shenanigans ensued at the bridal shower and the bachelor party. However, both the bride and groom have gone missing, and now the party has to figure out what the heck is even going on. Back at the bridal shower, the bride is gone, and Lady Jalessa Spear has come back with a note in her hand, exclaiming that the guards have been knocked out and the princess is gone. Um, in the note, she opens it with shaky hands and she looks at it and hands it to Lady Lady Cosima, who reads it, and she's like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, ah, oh, damn it, Celeste!" And she takes the paper and kind of crumples it a little bit. It it it, it appears that our 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 guest has uh, decided to leave and um have a different celebration and oh i don't know i don't know where she's gone um she didn't say and i uh, i need to find her or her mother will kill me the wedding is tomorrow dear it, celeste and she's like shaking and looking like she's gonna just have a mental breakdown at any moment uh and uh hilrana says to, was it was it a dwarf i was talking to or a halfling it was a halfling. Uh, she leans over and says, wow, this party just got interesting. Yeah, I mean, I... Did she, like, ran away? Like, I wanted to run away, it but I didn't know like... that was an option. <laughs> of course. Do you think we should get involved or no? Yeah, like, we should definitely get involved. I like the way you think. Awesome. And she pulls you over <laughs> towards the crowd of people. Somebody came over and is like fanning uh, Cosima and like, like, it's all right. It's all right. I'm 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 sure the guards will wake up and they'll be able to find her and someone will tell us where she is. And uh, but I, I, I don't know where she would have gone. I don't know. And people are just like talking and trying to figure out what's going on. Lady Cosima, is I offer you any assistance in helping find her? Oh, Amber, do you? It's just. I, I thought I was having a good party. I thought I thought that I did everything that I could, and and she said that she needed to have a, a more enjoyable evening, and that she would be back, maybe. First off, I just have to clear something up. I'm not actually Lady Amber. Um, I just kind of came here for fun. I'm distance cousins with the prince. She's like, let's go. Um, I got your Lady Amber. She was clutching. No, no, no. It's okay. Um, I got Lady Amber's invitation by mistake, and I just thought it'd be fun to come here and, you know, kind of see what the family was up to. But I wasn't expecting something like this to happen, and things kind of got real. What? Um, yeah. So I'm sorry that I uh, pretended to be Amber. Um, I was just trying to have a little fun. But if you will forgive me, I'm actually here. I would like to help you. She just looks but at you. I just you wanted to be honest with you first. because I was just trying to have fun and it was, it's not fun anymore whenever, you know, somebody's missing. And uh, Bernadette's like, yeah, she, she, she's actually uh, a bit of a friend of mine. Uh, we've just gotten to know each other recently, but I, I figured it would be okay for her to be here. And, 
Um, she we she really would want to help. I think I think she'd be able to help you out. And so you can roll persuasion with advantage if you want. Oh, the one on that one. <laughs> oh, another one. Okay, wait. Did you get double ones? <laughs> I got. Oh, and oh my, my god. Yeah, and my persuasion is minus one, so I got a zero. So, Lady Cosima. The countess kind of looks at you in disgust and she like backs away and she's like, I, I don't need the help of someone who broke into my party and pretended to be someone that they're not and was touching me. And I, I don't know who you are. What are you what are you doing here? How could you do that? Like I said, I'm I'm so sorry. I I, I just thought it'd be fun. Just get out. Just get out. Just get out. Guards. Oh, God, they're passed out. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Oh, Princess, what is going on? Okay. Hirana, oh, like, runs out of the party. Bernadette, no, Bernadette, Bernadette's going to grab your arm and be like, don't go. She needs your, like, just don't. She's having a mental breakdown. Well, I, well, I'm still planning on helping her, but I don't want to get arrested. Don't get arrested. It's fine. That's not really what I had planned for my evening. Don't get arrested. She's just freaking out. Just, just stay. If you're okay. able to help, that's great. Okay. Plus... Well, I mean, I'll do everything I can. My dad has some connections in the city. I mean, I'm sure I can convince yeah, him to I'm help. Sure. I mean, and she just went away for a little bit. She probably just wanted to go have some fun. Lanny, what are you doing? Oh, um, I'm going to come over to them, uh, Hirana and Bernadette, I guess is her name, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, uh, my name's Lanifer. I have a little bit of experience with magic. I'm not terribly talented, but it's possible that I might be able to help as well. Oh, um, yeah, wonderful. Lanifer, it's a, your music was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the offer for help. I, I, I guess I'm figuring things out since Cosima is having a breakdown. Um, right. But yeah, yes, I, thank I, you I for that. the offer. You don't happen to have any idea where she might have gone, do you? Um, are you guys cool? No, what do you mean? Like, can you keep a secret? Of course. Okay. Um, you seem, you seem pretty, pretty calm and even tempered. So, um, I, I, I know where they're going. I was actually supposed to go with them. Uh, Lady, uh, Jalessa left without me though. Rude. And, um, we're supposed to go meet up at the Fairy Fire, which is a club kind of down in the lower terrace. Like, that's what our plan was. Just go through Cosima's thing, meet up, and, and then ha- have a have a, a convenient excuse to, to leave so that we could go find the princess and uh, meet up and then have some some more fun. And you guys seem pretty interesting. And uh, Lady Lady Amber, and she winks at you. You seem like you're, you're down for a party. And I... Don't feel comfortable kind of walking there by myself now that Jalessa went off without oh, Of course me. we would accompany so, you. If you guys want to come, of course. we'd love to have you there. I think that probably your performance is over and she kind of gestures at you, Lanaver. Oh, yes, it is. It's over. Yeah, I, I believe so. Why don't we sure. go? Yeah, let's go. If you think you know where she is, well, you might as well go check. And if that turns out not to be correct, um, we'll have to see where... The night takes us, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't want to travel down there by myself. Um, and you guys seem pretty capable. And then she comes away from the corner that you guys were hanging out in and she says loudly, Don't worry, Duchess Cosima, we're going to go and look for the princess. We will bring her back and she'll be ready, fresh, bright and early tomorrow morning to for the wedding. It'll be great. We're going to go find her. Um, meanwhile, why don't you get in touch with the castle, get some more guards, have just take a break, take your feet up. You can trust me. I promise I will find her. Duchess uh, Cosima, who's just like still sobbing and surrounded by a group of people is like oh, all right um i i guess oh, i guess that's i please please do your best to find her and just keeps freaking out so you guys can take the long trek down to the lower terrace from where you are in the upper terrace and make your way to uh where the fairy fire is so back at the bachelor party prince, prince grant he there were, there were, he's like, he has part of his shirt is like ripped and he has like a cut across his cheek and he's like, they, they took him, uh, the brigands, they came out into the alleyway and they, they attacked it. They took Prince Grant. 
And he like collapses over a little bit onto a table, clutching at his side. I, Which way did they go? They went. They went out that way, but but it's too late. They're gone. They took him. They beat him, and they 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 just grabbed him and ran off. Are you okay? Oh, I'm. I, yeah, I guess. And he wipes his, the blood off of his face a little bit. So Ferris is going to do the whistle thing that I can't actually do in real life to kind of get everybody to shut up and pay attention. The, everything kind of quiets down a little bit. And she's going to yell, go find the prince. He's been taken. Okay. So um, when you say that, some people kind of like stumble up get up from the boat and then they look around and they're like don't have any weapons they don't like they try to go out into the alley and then turn around and like oh man i'm I'm wasted i don't i don't know i like i can't handle this one i can't i'm not gonna go after some some burglars or people who grabbed him that's crazy i'm not getting hurt melee's will melee's is going to grab well i guess he doesn't have any weapons on him so he'll if there's a bar chair he's gonna break it and grab a, just the sharpest stick that came out of it or whatever. Yeah, the bartender's like, hey, or you're going to have to pay for that. This is for the prince. And then I'm going to run out and try to... I mean, I know he said that they were all gone, but actually double check to see that they're all gone. Yeah. And make a pers- if not, then start looking around. Make a perception so. check for me. 19. Um... You don't see anybody in the, the immediate vicinity um, other than a person across the street who is currently taking out. Like, there's a back alley behind the thing, and they're taking out some trash from another building. Um, and they kind of look at you and your intense gaze. Ev- you there. Evening. Yeah, what, what is it? What have you seen? Uh, I just... In this alley? I just, Was there a skirmish? I literally came outside, like, a couple seconds ago to take the trash out. <laughs> So you're unobservant. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look around for any evidence, see if I can see like footprints or something. Yeah, make a investigation check, I guess. Got a 16. 16. So you definitely see the signs in the ground and the dirt in this back alley. It's a little bit muddy. The signs of a bit of a scuffle of footprints going down the alleyway, like towards this building, some kind of like jumble of footprints and then some leading down the opposite direction. And then it gets towards the street and it's more paved there. And so it's not, you can't really see any more footprints past that. Am I smart enough to determine like how many different footprints? Yeah, I would say with that, you got the sense that there were probably four assailants and then the footprints of two other people that were probably uh, the prince and... Prince Grant. Uh, Prince Sono and Prince Grant. Do they look like big footprints? Look like human sized. Human sized. Okay. One set is slightly smaller. Since I see, if I really do see nothing, I'll just, I'll head back in. So we could do a couple of things. We could split up and look the st- look on the streets and try to find him. Or if you're his friend, is there any reason you can think of that someone may grab him on the night of his bachelor party? Is it a prank? Do you think? I don't know. I'm not really his friend. I, I'm going to be his brother-in-law, but uh, you can make an insight check if you guys would like to. <laughs> I rolled a five. <laughs> I have zero. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, with the 13, uh, he didn't roll very well. He seems a bit squirrely. When you mentioned a prank, you saw like a little bit of flicker in his eyes. So I'm, Ferris is going to catch Melissa's eye and kind of quirk her eyebrow like, mm hmm. Melee's will lean into Prince, Prince Sonos. So no, yeah. Get really close to his face <laughs> and just say, is there anything you would like to tell us, Prince? Sure, make an intimidation check for me. 25. Oh, I rolled it, it was a natural 20 plus the nice. 5. Oh my god. So you get right up in his face, and it's just, you're an intimidating presence for sure, and you've just put all of that energy into this. And this slightly drunk and uh, carefree man, immediately his look sobers up, and he looks at you and he says, 
it was it was i had i have good intentions it's not i he won't be hurt or anything it it it's not a prank per se i just uh, i just wanted to to help him out and help my sister out okay so is he gonna hook up with the princess i mean i don't know what they're going to do i and so he's like let's let's come over here and he brings you over into that alcove that you had for your your fortune telling oh boy you both seem you both seem fairly nice and fun so maybe you will understand uh do you know about the claudian custom of not being able to see your bride or groom the week before they are you are to be married uh it seems like i heard something about that earlier it seems a little nuts to me but whatever yeah it is it's crazy it's super old-fashioned but um nonetheless we are the members of the royal family and so we have to kind of follow that logic prince grant's uh airship did not arrive um until about four days ago um he was supposed to be here weeks ago and there was bad weather that kept him from coming and so my sister was not able to see him and she's been distraught about that and so i heard from an acquaintance of mine that she was planning on ditching her party tonight and going over to a place called the fairy fire and i thought hmm maybe i could hire some people to kidnap prince grant bring him over to the fairy fire then it's neither of their faults that they're together and they can have a chance to see each other so if you planned this why are you so alarmed by it well, to be fair, I was not expecting to be cut in the face. They're very good at their job. Who were the people you hired? How did you find them? Oh, well, I mean, I, I have friends. Um, I talked to a couple of my acquaintances who are more in league with people who work in the theaters. And so he put me in touch with some uh, very good actors who said that they would take the gig. And I I came up with a little narrative for what the what the, the uh, kidnapping would be and and what my sister would be told so that it could be all kind of above board and, and no one would know and they wouldn't get in trouble for seeing each other. Well, let's hope that's what actually happened. I think maybe... Maybe uh, you should head on over to the fairy fire. Oh, I, I, can, and, I cannot go. I can't go there this type of night. Are you kidding? Oh, for gosh sakes. This is an astoundingly <laughs> stupid plan. Thank you. Fine. I'll go. I mean, if you guys are going, I'll go with you. But I'm not going to go by myself. Melace, I know you've put together this fabulous party, but would you mind walking us down there? Absolutely, of course. Oh yeah, I would feel so. I would feel so much more safe if you went. Of course, you would. Like, I would. He touches his face again, and he like looks at the blood a little bit still on his fingers, and he like shudders a little bit. Yeah, I, I couldn't bring guards with me because then they would know I was involved. But you guys, please, please, let's go. Oh my gosh, this will be f- so fun. This will just make the night even better. You thought this was amazing, Miles. You went above and beyond anything I could have ever expected of anyone that I didn't even know. Uh, this will just take things even to the next level. It's going to be great. Although I think you're going to have to leave your posse here. I, I think too many people coming would be a bit too conspicuous. So let's just slip on out and head on over there. Let's hope your plan actually went according to plan and this wasn't just a giant easy way for this guy to be actually kidnapped oh no no don't be ridiculous Mm. i think they're just very good actors i mean i paid a lot for them to do it so i would assume that they really wanted to commit to it and make it seem serious and of course injuring we would make it very convincing sure and it would be really embarrassing for you if you just paid people to kidnap he just kind of blinks and like you see a moment of worry pass across his face and then he just smiles you're like (laughs) that'll be fine let's go let's go Lanover and Hilrana, if you both can roll a d20 for me. I got a 13. 11. So fortunately, on your way down to, uh, if you make your way through the upper terrace, through the streets of the fight, nicer parts, you go down the funicular to the lower terrace, you make your way through the different market areas and find yourself being led by Bernadette into a place of the city that you probably know called the Thorn, an area of the city which kind of has a lot more like pawn shops and 
warehouses and a little bit less reputable gambling halls and taverns and uh, bars and stuff like that in some warehouses. And you uh, are brought into a part that has a bunch of these broken down looking warehouses. But you've kept enough of an eye out. Um, Bernadette bringing you there directly. You guys have covered yourselves up enough to like not look too conspicuous. And you don't run into any trouble along the way. So you find your way to uh, this fairly inconspicuous looking alleyway. But as you start to go down it, you can feel the ground vibrate. And as you get closer, it gets a heavier and heavier vibration. And you can hear like really deep sounding music or drumming and something that's a little bit otherworldly. And it's vibrating the whole area. And like there are some bottles, uh, like a trash bag rattling a little bit. And you make your way down to a door that has a... It's on like a one-story ramshackle looking warehouse. Um, At the end of the alleyway, there's a door that's made of metal and it has a circle of stars and then a little peephole above that circle of stars. So what do we do now? Do we just knock? Is there a password? Um, well, I was supposed to come with Jalessa, but she went off without me, probably because I was busy trying to help Kasima. She saw the moment to get away. Uh, It's fine. I'll just talk my way Okay, yeah, that'd be great, because there might be something, but I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, so Lady's just going to knock on this. It's a door, right? With a yeah, circle on it? Back. Yeah, he is knocking. Uh, a moment passes, and you hear a voice say, Passphrase. I'm afraid we don't know the passphrase, but it would just be so lovely if you could let us in without it. Make a persuasion check. Uh, an 11! The little like uh, I the little peephole that had been opened up to look out at you, and you heard the voice, uh, kind of a, you saw an eye, and you heard the word passphrase. It just immediately shuts. Shit. <laughs> well, well, shit. Uh, there has to be another entrance. Huh? We, yeah, we we can get in. Um, we gotta just find a way. Uh, maybe I can try to remember. I she didn't ever tell me the passphrase though. Oh, shit, shit. Let's go ahead because you guys are the other people are gonna be there probably around the same time. So, uh, so we can all meet up and finally see each other. Yay! Um, Miles, uh, Ferris, and Sono have snuck out of the bachelor party. There's still performers going. The people that are left there are having a great time. All the people that you hired, Miles, are just, it's still an awesome party. Um, so you aren't able, you're able to leave without too much issue. And I need you both to make a d20 roll for me as well. 13. 7. Seven. Okay. So um, you make it pretty far down and you get into the lower terrace. You're you're making your way through the thorn. You feel a, a shape come out from behind a building and bump into you, Miles, and then start to try to, and then like dart off. Do I feel like I got manhandled in any way? I mean, you can make a perception check if you want to. Or, well, I'll, I'll I make guess. A roll for them. Do I know? Is this like a seedy part of town? Oh, yeah. It's very seedy. Uh, can I try to grab their arm? Sure. Go for it. Make a athletics check. Oh boy. 19. Okay. So this this shorter figure tries to like weave out of your way, but you quickly, Lightning just kind of reach out and grasp their arm and they whip back and you see the very terrified face of a female human with stringy blonde hair and her face and a hood up and she just looks at you and then just like, I'm sorry. And she drops something that was in her hand and like pulls to try to get away from you. What did she drop? It's like a, a some kind of coin, a purse that you would have had on your person most likely. Okay. I just take it off the ground and then let her okay. go. All right. She darts off really quickly. Um, and Sono was like, oh, let, let's keep going. Well, now see, she interrupted Ferris because Ferris has been, had her arm wrapped around Milace's arm mm-hmm. she's been making sure when they bump you know over the cobblestone he gets a little touch of the old ladies Ooh. so now this has happened so now she's got to cuddle back up that is <laughs> totally fine with Milace. um sort of sees this and he goes and like grabs on to hmm, whose arm would he grab on to Oh Jesus! <laughs> uh, he grabs onto uh, Amelia's other arm, and he's like, "I'll feel safer like this." Understandable. <laughs> they just—he's not—he's not pressing himself up against you like Ferris's, but he's definitely like admiring your your strength. 
this is um, fine. Just if I need my weapon, be ready to <laughs> cower be- behind me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for sure. That sounds like a great plan. <laughs> so you guys make your way th- uh, the rest of the way to the fairy fire um, without issue and get there. Same thing. It's the alleyway. You've been here before. The ground is kind of rumbling. The telltale sound of the music inside of the club. Um, you don't, neither of you know tonight's passphrase because you weren't planning on going, um, but you have been here before. So there is a potential that you could talk your way in. As you approach, um, you see at the doorway looking a bit frustrated, um, a, what, go ahead and describe yourself for us again, for, for just for people's memories. So Lanover is uh, an Aladrin. Uh, he's currently male and he's in summer. So he has bright orange hair. Um, he's wearing this dark brown kind of ratty looking uh, leather armor. It's not terribly fresh. <laughs> um, and But he still looks very well composed somehow. He's pulling off this shabby, terrible armor quite well. And he's carrying a rapier and he has a violin case strapped to his back. Hilrana is an Earth Genesee. Uh, she appears to be female. Um, I believe I am still wearing my leafy dress with jewels on it, but I'm wearing a cloak over it for traveling. And, uh, my hair is green and viney. You guys probably see, as they come, as these other people coming down the street, if uh, Ferris and Miles could just describe themselves for you guys real quick. I am a very tall, very, very, very curvy tiefling. With big old horns and a long tail that's got a little heart shape at the end. It's good for smacking. <laughs> uh, she's got little uh, Betty Page hair. And um, she's probably like a very light, delicate pink color with black eyes. Miles is, well, he looks like a... Roman gladiator right now because of the toga and the shield and sword which he is not trying to obscure in any way uh, he's just muscles upon muscles but not like not like the veiny bodybuilder kind just like very thick man he is a bit of a paunch just a little bit uh, but there's definitely still abs there he's an asimir so I don't know what that means as far I feel like in my head I'm envisioning him with like this like very soft preternatural glow. He just looks mm-hmm. dewy. Yes. That's and he, but he looks mo- he looks human though other than kind of that glow that he has about him. So you guys see uh Lanny and Hilrana you see coming down the road the man that was just described, the woman that was just described, um and then a third person with the with the same complexion and a very similar look to Princess Celeste with just shorter hair. Um, he's a bit taller and thinner than her and wearing kind of a similar colors. So he's a, a Air Genesi. He is kind of like light blue skin and whitish hair, dressed very finely. And they're both, both the Genesi and the Tiefling are clutching onto this muscled man as they make their way down the road. You also see, um, other than the elven figure and the earth Genasi figure, Miles and Ferris, you guys both see a halfling woman with really pretty blonde hair that's wearing kind of dark, plain clothing. Um, and Sono, as soon as he sees the figures, he's like, Bernadette? Is that you? What are you doing down here? And she turns around and looks at him and she's like, Sono? Sono, what the hell are you doing here? You weren't invited? And he's like, of course I was. You know me. I always know where the good parties are. Let me introduce you to my friends. And who? And I would love to know your charming friends. And he gestures over to Miles and Ferris. And he's like, this is the lovely and radiant Ferris. Um, she's quite a fabulous fortune teller. And this divine man is Miles. And he just, he's made this evening so spectacular so far. But it's even better now that I'm here with you. And he grasps onto Bernadette's hand playfully and gives it a kiss. And she like rolls her eyes at him. Oh, okay. It's lovely to meet you. Um, Ferris, Miles, these are my friends I just met tonight. Uh, Lanover and Hilrana. 
It's a pleasure, I suppose. Hello, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. Are these the hoodlums you hired to kidnap the prince? No, 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 no. Kidnap no. the prince? <laughs> Nobody hired anyone to kidnap the prince. What are you talking about, Miles? You're so funny. Someone kidnapped the prince? No, no, no one kidnapped the prince. He, like, glares at Miles. <laughs> This ding-dong over here hired some thugs from the theater department to bring the prince down here from his bachelor party. So we're here to make sure he's okay. Your Excellency, you don't happen to know the password, do you? Oh, we'll get in. I mean, I I think I do, but I uh, can't remember it right now. I'm just dazzled by the the. The beauty of my of the company around me. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Yes, try to be undazzled. We have something to do here. And I'd like to get back to the party. Try your best. All right, so none of us know what the password is to get into this place, is it? What is the protocol? How how do you go about finding out the password for any given night? Well, Ferris is going to stomp over to the door and start beating on it and kicking it. Okay. Slam, slam, slam. That's one way of smack, getting smack, in. Smack, smack, uh, smack. Uh, the little peephole opens and it says... Password. Jerry, it's Ferris. Let me in. Make a persuasion check with advantage because you've been here before. Jerry, you better let me in. 19. You can see the eye get closer to the peephole and look around and take in uh, your, your tiefling form. And then the, the you hear a bunch of locks being undone and then the door swings open. It's like, I told you to call me Jeremiah the Wizard. Oh, Jeremiah the Wizard, let us in, honey. We got business. Uh, all right. But next time, know the passphrase, or you shall be doomed in all the nine hells. And it's this, like, very shrimpy human man, but he has, like, this big billowing cloak over him, and he's, like, hunched forward, and he's trying to give you, like, this this weird grimace, but it's it's not very convincing. Thank you, well, Jeremiah. He's going to kiss him on the forehead. He blushes profusely and pulls his, his hood back down further. And he's like, just get in there before Jeremiah the wizard decides to curse you. Oh, uh, sorry about the trouble, Jeremiah. Thank you for letting us in. As we walk in, I'll just say, I'll just be like, Jerry, and then pat him on the back. <laughs> and he's like, be a lace. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you go in, Lady Bernadette pulls herself very in very closely and is is sticking between uh, Lanover and Hilrana very closely, almost like she's trying to hide between the two of you, away from Jeremiah the, the wizened. And um, uh, Sono just winks at him and then pulls a coin out from his purse and gives it to him. And Jeremiah is like, much obliged. No get inside before I change my mind. Uh, there's just like a little landing where Jeremiah is sitting on a, or Jerry is sitting on a shabby stool waiting for people to knock on the door and a staircase that goes down. It's a stone staircase that just keeps going down. Um, and you guys can go down the stairs if you would like to. The music gets louder and louder and louder as you get down there and rattling your bones. And there's another metal door at the bottom, another person on a stool with a similar hood on. But they're like, oh, hey. Hey, guys. Hey, Miles, Ferris. What's up? It's been a long time. Oh, Prince? I haven't seen you here in a long time. It's good to have you here tonight. And it's this very smiley human woman. And she's like, oh, now, before you guys go in, you know the drill. And um, you both know to hold your hands out um, to to her uh, one at a time. And so you hold your hands out and she places her hands on top of yours and mutters like some kind of incantation. And pick a, pick a color for me, uh, Ferris and then Miles. Green. Green. You start to glow this, like, sparkly green all over your body. Um, And then, uh, Miles, what color would you like to be? Uh, We'll go with red. Red. Again, Miles gets this, like, glow of sparkly red energy around his body. And she's like, go on in, honey. Um, And you guys can go in. And she she looks at the rest of you expectantly. She's like, first time here wonderful and actually sono gets it too because he's been here before he gets kind of like a lavender sparkle around him and goes inside i need your hands anyone anyone brave sure um lanny puts his hands out he's kind of like slightly tentative like what is this exactly you could make an arcana check if you wanted to it's fairy fire yeah 
It's in the name. Yeah. Oh, he rolls a one, so he doesn't. He know doesn't that. know. He's like, oh, but gosh. I know that it's a parlor trick of some sort, which I mean, it kind of is. But um, yeah. So you, what color would you like, Lanny? Oh, I'll take orange. Ooh, so it's a very pretty, sparkly orange, and you can go through the door. And Lady Burnt up because she's between you and Hilrana goes up, and she's like, um, yellow. And she gets this this nice yellow sparkle. And then uh, she l- reaches up for your hands, Hilrana. Hilrana puts her hands in her hands and says, I'd like purple. Oh, of course. And then you get this purple sparkly energy. And you all uh, can go inside. Inside is just this mass of bodies dancing to this crazy music um inside there's all these different colors of sparkly people and as they move the sparkles move around their skin so it's just like a sea of all of these beautiful bright glowing colors in the very dark room and you can also see kind of suspended from the ceiling are these transparent uh glass maybe boxes that don't seem like they're really hanging from anything they're just kind of floating in the air and they have various dancers and musicians and stuff inside of them also radiating these like prisms of light out from where they are and so the whole place is just like lit up crazy almost like too much to take in all at once with this light and and color Uh, there's also you can see over to one side there's a very very long bar that almost spans the entire length of this big warehouse like space and then there are some a hall a couple hallways that branch off from this main room Tilrana's mind is blown she's never seen anything like this and she's like a kid in a candy store with all of these new sensory experiences all right we know what the prince looks like you guys know what the princess looks like do we want to split up take these two hallways and see if we can find them. May I ask you something, Prince Sona? Oh, yeah, of course. And do you think that the prince or the princess would be the kind that would be likely to be dancing among all these people? Or would they go to an area more private? Oh, I mean, I, my sister for sure would, would want to dance. I think that's why she was coming here. Keep an eye out for somebody that looks like me. And uh, also her friend Jalessa should probably be here. Bernadette, I thought, was supposed to be here there too, with um, them too, but... Looks like she's stuck with me, and he gives her a wink and a nudge, and she's like... Well, I hope she's actually here, Um, but what if Prince Grant, would he be dancing? Oh, I mean, unless he's had a... he's been hit in the head and had a drastic personality change from the last time I saw him. Uh, no. He's more likely to be hiding in a corner somewhere. Yeah, but I didn't hire people to bring him here to dance, I hired them to, like, bring him here and then... Oh God, I shouldn't be saying this. I shouldn't be saying this. Don't tell anyone. So I hired, so I knew Celeste was coming here. I said, I had the actors also decide to come grab her at some point and then bring them together so that they're trapped together. You know the drill. Oh no, we're going to die. We're trapped together at the eve before our wedding. This sounds like a terrible plan. You know. I have some concerns, yes. What are you talking about? It's a great um, plan. I, I really, uh, do you have any idea where in this building they would have brought the prince? No, no. Oh, no, of course not. not. I didn't find that information out. I just told them that once like a couple hours have passed, we all have our party. Just bring them back out and we'll we'll head home. Uh, Miles, would he know if there's a VIP room? Oh, Miles for sure knows <laughs> that there's a VIP room. Uh, there's a VIP room. Surely they might have taken them there. Why Why are we in a rush? Let's have some Why fun. are we in a rush? This whole system sounds... I mean, this, this, this whole plan sounds very poorly planned and a little bit dangerous. I mean, that's part of the fun, isn't it? And uh, Bernadette looks at him and she's like, Well, I know our plan was to come here and dance and find the princess and just hang out. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll check out the dance floor and hopefully somebody hasn't nabbed her yet. And if we don't see her, then maybe we can uh, figure out what's going on. All right, let's look around for the princess. What's her favorite color? I think it's like a like a pink, maybe. Maybe that's what she would have picked for her aura. Oh yeah, good thinking. So if we, if we look for pink people, hmm. yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Also, we could look for Jalessa. She's probably like a like a purple. I guess we'll start there then. Okay, sure. Um, Miles, are you still are you going to the VIP area still? Yeah, I'm going to go do that. He feels like everyone's priorities are kind of out of whack with the princess. 
he doesn't know exactly what happened with her, but he knows that the the prince it seemed to be a more violent thing. Sure, makes sense. Bernadette and Sono go off trying to kind of as a pair to look for people. Um, you guys can all make a except for uh Miles can make a perception check for me in the sea of dancing, writhing bodies, all sparkling. Natural twenty. I got a sixteen. Natural twenty. Nice. Theris, you hone in on the all the pink people because of the pink color. Um, you kind of are able to z- hone in on them through all the different colors that are going on and kind of weave your way through quickly looking around, trying to spot. You don't see anybody. It's a lot of people. So it takes you about 10, 15 minutes to really like scan everybody and check everybody. You don't see anybody that matches the description of the princess. So a woman that looks similar to, to Prince Sono, um, you, you haven't picked anybody up. There's still like side rooms, but you don't see her in the main big room. Um, and same thing for you, Hilrana, you're looking out for the lady Jalessa, who you've met, who has that long dark hair that was supposed to be meeting up with Princess Celeste. And you look around for purple bodies about after like five-ish minutes, you do uh, find a woman that looks like her kind of illuminated in purple and she's dancing up on some really built half orc dude. The bodies are moving together. It it takes you a couple minutes just to like push your way through and get over to where she is. If you want to go talk to her, um, Lanny, you are scoping around and kind of just doing a more surface level thing and you don't see anybody at the moment. Um, so would you like to go up and try to talk to her? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go up to her and kind of tap her and be like, Hey, uh, uh, La- Lady Jalessa? Sorry, can't hear you. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of dancing right now. I'll, I'll be done in a second. And she keeps dancing with this guy. Lady Jalessa, I'm I'm looking for the princess. Is she here? Oh. <sighs> Give me a second, hon. And she caresses the half-orc's face and then, and then turns around and looks at you, her arms crossed. Yeah, I mean, she's here. She's dancing. She's having a good time. Were you at the party? Yeah, yeah, I was at the party. What? Hey. Um, hey. Yeah, so everybody at the party noticed she left, so we just came here to make sure that she's safe, and uh, everybody was really worried about her. Uh, she's fine. I mean, now you know that she came here, so we're just having a good time. If she's not on the dance floor, she's probably off making out with somebody, knowing her. Great. When, when was the last time you saw her? Uh, just about ten minutes ago. Ten I've been really ago? having a good time with, with this guy here. I don't know his name, but like... Isn't he handsome? Oh, yeah, he's very cute. <laughs> um, where did you see her last? Just so I know oh, kind of where to look. she went over to the bar to get a drink. She's thirsty. It's got to, It gets pretty hot in here. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Enjoy your night. Thanks. You too. So then I'm going to head towards the bar. Okay. Awesome. So Miles, you have gone over to the VIP area where there are two... Um, again, with this weird robed look, I guess this is the look that they went for with this this like fake wizard look. Their hands are clasped together in a wizardly fashion. Yeah, I'll go up and just nod to them and then proceed to try and walk through as if I own the place. Okay, make a, a persuasion check for me. Oh no, I got an 11. <laughs> you like do the little like head like hips up kind of head and you go to walk past them and from beneath their robes their arms dart out and b- like block the area and they say none shall pass <sighs> he's gonna sigh really this again uh fine how about this and then he'll pull out a couple of gold pieces and hand them to him he's like how about now Sure, make a persuasion check again, but with advantage this time. Oh my god, ten. <laughs> that was the high They just one. look at you and they're like, none shall pass. And then they point to their hand like, give us more. <laughs> He's starting to get annoyed, but he doesn't want to cause a scene. And so he'll give them a couple of more gold pieces. Okay, eventually they just keep pointing... And then you give them like about like 10 gold and then they'll finally let you pass, which is an exorbitant amount of money. But fortunately, Miles has a a good amount of disposable income. They part and then look at you and nod and you can go up into the VIP area. They're like, Jerry's a loser. Uh, So I, okay, I will continue up 
and uh, I'll be looking for Prince Grant or anyone who looks shady. Make a perception check for me once you get up into the space. It's still very loud. There are lots of people dancing up here. There's a pair of people in these really dark cloaks over in a corner talking and you see one of them slide some drugs to the other one and like the other one slides some money. Make a perception check to see if you see anybody that uh, other than that. I rolled a five. Yeah, you just look over there and you get distracted by that and then you get distracted by the, the beautiful dancers. And they have like an orb of light, like a like a drift globe. <laughs> and you just get distracted for that minute and you blink and look away and uh, you haven't really noticed anybody that matches Gr- Prince Grant's description or anybody particularly of note up here. I, I think he would assume that maybe if he just sits and like tries to keep an eye out, something might happen. And so he will go up to one of the dancers and just start appreciating, watching and appreciating the dancing while still trying to get my, like, just keep an eye out. Sounds great. Okay. So yeah, you're posted up. I have a watch over in this area, watching over the VIP area in case anybody goes in. Lorana, you were going over to the bar to see if you could find out where the princess had gone. Lanny and uh, Ferris, if you, you could probably have made your way back over here by now. Okay, so I'm going to go up to them and say, Hey, I just uh, found Lady... I did find Lady Jalessa. Um, she said the princess is here, or she was here at least. Um, she saw her 10 minutes ago over by the bar. Yeah, so she, she, we at least know that she she's here somewhere where she was. I'm going to walk down where there's some, like, where the bathrooms would be or the privies or whatever. So I just have this feeling that if the prince didn't hook up with the princess, then he's probably hiding somewhere. We're going to go down and look at the bathrooms. Where's everybody else doing? Are they following or going somewhere else? I'm going to talk to the bartender. Since Hilvrana's already at the bar, let's have her talk to the bartender. There are a couple bartenders because it's just this one really long bar that almost spans the entire room. People are coming up, getting drinks and crowding around. You are managed to be able to get the attention of a dwarven man. Big, burly, hairy arms and a a, a more cropped beard than you might normally see and a shaved head. Look up as you can say, what can get you? Hi, I was actually wondering if you've seen my friend. She's very attractive, uh, slender, long, white hair. I seem to have lost her. I mean, maybe. Well, yes or no. I see a lot of people. You, you either seen her or you haven't. Maybe I saw her, maybe I didn't. There are people always speaking in riddles in this city. All right, listen, are you going to get a drink or are you going to... Sure, give me a drink. So I'll have water. He rolls his eyes and starts pouring you the water. <laughs> kind of shoves it across the table. It splashes a little bit out of the, out of the lip of the drink. And he's like, next, what can I get you? She, she, his eyes just like slide off of you. She rolls her eyes and tries to go make her way down to the next bartender. <laughs> it's another dwarven man who looks like he could be this this man's twin, except that he does have like a long ponytail instead of a shaved head. Look, I get you. Hi, I'm actually in a lot of trouble, and I thought you might be able to help me. Oh, you're in trouble? Yes. Uh, are you okay? What, what I'm, do you mean? I'm new to the city, and I came here with my friend. Um, but we got separated, and I don't know where she is, and I'm very afraid to be by myself. Could you help me? Make a, make a deception check for me, please, Hilrana. Uh, ten. Let's see, let's see. He looks at you, he smiles a little bit, and he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that your, your your friend left you here. That's terrible. Why would she bring you here to begin with? This is kind of a rough place for somebody that's new to the well, city. Well, she just said this was one of the best places in town, and I had to check it out while I was here. And I've never been to a place like this. See, I live out in the forest, and I'm just not used to a city. It definitely doesn't look like you're kind of seen. Here, take a seat. And he looks at some people that are sitting down at the bar and, like, the glares at, at them. Thank you so much. Hilrana, like, pats her eyes. She she might still be here. I don't know if you've seen her. Um, she she's very beautiful and has long white hair. Oh, I mean, I was gonna say if you were if you were looking for somebody very beautiful, there. I mean, there's somebody right in front of me right now. Well, uh, I mean, obviously, Hilrana blushes a little bit. Sorry, that was really inappropriate of me to say. No, I, you are I a scared really and you're appreciate alone. Your I'm really help. sorry. Please, uh, please forget I said that. Uh, you're you're a woman with long. Uh, White hair, yeah. I d- I saw someone that looked like that. It was striking. It was interesting about like 
maybe 15 minutes ago. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I hope she's still here. Um, do you know anywhere else that she might have gone in here? Is there a popular spot? Or do you have an intercom system, perhaps? Well, it looked... Uh, let's see. It looked like somebody came up to her and, like, looked like they needed help with something and, and took her by the arm and she went off and, and she, he points down this one hallway, probably towards, like, the, the bathrooms. There's there's also, like... I don't know, there's some, there's some storage rooms and, like, offices, but, you know... Uh, Probably just the bathroom. She probably just went to the bathroom. I hope so. I hope she knew those people. I didn't know if we were going to meet anyone else here. I this mean, place you... seems... This, this. I mean, this place is nice, but this area just seems so dangerous. I mean, it's not for somebody new to the city, that's for sure. And he's like, you're welcome to stay here. Uh, have just whatever you want just hang out all, and I can I can make sure that nobody bothers you while you're while I'm still on my shift and then... And then uh, we can hopefully, if your friend is back, then we can have you hook up with her. And if not, then I'll uh, ask around and see if any of my any of my buddies can help escort you back to where you stay in. Oh, I really appreciate that. I would love an escort. Um, I think I should try to head over to the bathrooms just to see. I don't want her to be worrying about me. Um, but I will check back with you if I don't see her yeah, because do. it's awfully frightening here. Oh, please don't be scared. Oh, it looks a lot rougher than it is. You just, it's its fine. If you get worried or lost, just give a shout. Uh, my name, sorry, I didn't even ask your name. Oh. My name is uh, Dom Rockfist. Uh, there's my brother, uh, Tom Rockfist. Uh, and there's my other brother, uh, John Rockfist. And... Uh, <laughs> We'll we'll watch out for you if you if you need anything. Just give a shout. Thank you so much. And my name is Hilrana, and it's so wonderful to meet you. And I really appreciate your help. And it's she touches his to arm. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. And he puts his his big meaty palm on yours and gives you a nod, not in a creepy way. And he's trying to be reassuring. Um, and he's like, "Just don't shout for Ron because Ron's an idiot." Okay, I I won't. Thank you so much for the tip. I'm gonna go check and see if I could find her real fast. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. She goes off towards the bathrooms. Melees, you are up watching the dancers, keeping an eye out. Make a uh, perception check for me. Twelve. Twelve. So you do see some people come in and out of this upper room. You're waiting for a little while. Um, you have a pretty good view of what's happening above you. And so you are able to make out like Helran at the bar, talking to some people. Ferris um, heading towards where you know the bathrooms are. Where is Lanifer right now? Where are you going to the bathrooms? Um, Yeah, I'll say that I was okay. going with Ferris. So you're with Ferris and, the and Sona. And you also see somebody come in to the room wearing one of those dark robes of the people that work here and grab, um, like tap one of the guys that was doing the drug deal that you saw when you first entered on the shoulder and whisper something in his ear. And then he stands up and nods at the guy that he was working with and goes down the stairs and heads over towards the, you can see following his path down towards where the, the bathroom hallway is. Well, since that's the shadiest thing that's happened yeah i guess so far and that's where ferris and everyone is heading yeah he's a little bit behind where they're going and th they, they've gone down the hallway and you see him going down and heading the same way as them i will follow him surreptitiously uh make a stealth check for me <laughs> it's pretty hard to be stealthy with your oh but he does not seem to notice you at all he's on a mission um, other people, okay. other people around you definitely notice you, and they're like, "Why is this guy like skulking around?" And then some of them try to come dance up with you, and um, you can follow him without him noticing you. Hilrana, you are also heading over towards the bathrooms, so I would say that you probably are getting over uh, around the same time as Mele. So you see him kind of skulking behind this fairly nondescript looking person, Ferris and Lanny and Prince Sono. You head down, and Ferris, you know where the bathrooms are. Were you heading towards the bathrooms or uh, somewhere else? Kind of toward the bathroom, but also checking out any storage buildings, I mean, storage rooms on the way. So you go up and check one storage door, and it is locked. Let's keep going. Just for the sake of everything, I would say that by now, you see coming up the hallway behind you a man that you've never seen before. And behind him skulking is Miles, and behind Miles a little bit is Hilrana walking towards you. So I look back and I say, oh, uh, Miles, was it? Did you happen to see anything? The man ahead of us uh, was engaged in a drug deal. Oh. 
And as you're saying this, that that man has passed you, Lanny, because you're converging on Miles. He's walked past you and gone and like knocked on a door that was a couple doors down from the storage room that Ferris just went into, and then waited a moment. Somebody opened the door and he went inside. Shall we? You shall. Yeah, Lanny nods. I mean, Sono's like, is, is like he dealt some drugs. Is I mean, I know that's illegal, but like, why are you following someone who's dealing drugs? Prince Sono, do you have a alternative suggestion as to how to find no i'm missing sorry i'm sorry Prince i'm Grant. sorry i'll shut up i'm sorry thank you <laughs> so he just like a wounded puppy follows behind you i want to go up to the door and knock but if when someone answers just immediately try to engage in combat okay sure um so there is a knock why don't you go ahead Make an intelligence check for me, Melee, to see if you can recall the type, like the pattern of knock that the guy did on the door before you. 14. 14. I think that's enough. It wasn't too complicated, so you can go up and do the same knock. You do it very convincingly, and the door creaks open, and you see the face of a another human man, this one with long coppery colored hair um very very pale and a little bit gaunt opens the door and looks surprised as he sees you and you're going to attack immediately i would like to try to headbutt him okay so i'm gonna say you can headbutt him and then we can go into initiative for people but that's i'll let you do that before we we jump into that so you headbutt go ahead and roll for an attack for me an unarmed attack i got a 15 Oh, yeah, that definitely beats this dude's armor class. So you just, like, slam your head into this pale, gaunt guy's face. I imagine you just, like, break his nose. Like, his nose is just, like, wrecked from this powerful headbutt. And he's like, what the fuck? And he, like, grabs his nose and stumbles backwards. And the door opens more as you moved your body into the space. And you can see in this chamber, it's probably, like, ten by... 15 like a rectangular room it has some piles of of boxes and kegs and stuff like that but there are uh, six other people inside of here including the man that had just come in from outside and they all look up startled some of them stand up and they pull out weapons let's go ahead and roll some initiative please 16 for hilrana i got a 10 15 13 they all rolled really terrible initiative so up first is going to be Hilrana. I would like to cast Entangle in the room. What is the radius of that? 20 foot square. Cool, yeah. Nice. Yeah, you can get them all. Get them all. So Entangle, Sweet. they have to make a save. Strength saving throw or be restrained by the Entangling plants until the spell ends. First one. Got a nine to fail. Uh, what is your save? It's 12. 12. Okay, so all of them except for one fail. So they are entangled. So they're restrained. They can use an action to make a strength check against the spell. On a success, it frees itself. When the spell ends, the conjured plants wilt away. Awesome. Very awesome. So they are all except for one of them. I'm going to say there's somebody kind of in a back corner who was able to jump out of the way um, or hulk their way out of the, the vines that came out. So now for everybody who is going to attack them while they are restrained, they're going to have, you're going to have advantage on attacking them. And also if they had like a, a spell that had a deck save, they're going to have disadvantage on that save. Next would be Ferris. Okay, so Ferris is going to use uh, Thaumaturgy to make her voice boom and say, stand down. Don't move. Go ahead and make an intimidation check with advantage because of the thaumaturgy. Okay, 14 for the first roll. And a 20, dirty 20 for the second. Um, so you see five of them, um, including... Uh, so all of the five of them that are currently entangled um, look frightened of this tiefling with the booming voice standing in the doorway. This pink tiefling with green sparkles all around her being like, stand down! And they all are currently wrapped up in these vines, but they do like a couple, They the five of them don't look like they're they're really gonna do anything to attack you um so the ones that did have like were able to grab a weapon before they uh, when they saw this happen uh let go of them but there is one stubborn person in the corner who was not trapped by the vines and so doesn't really 
doesn't feel convinced by your intimidation. Lanaver, what would you like to do? Uh, so there's the one guy who's not going to stand down? Yeah, I mean, the other ones are currently wrapped up in vines and can't really do anything. And there's one squirrely guy who's, who's ready, ready to rock. I'm going to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter <laughs> on that guy. Nice. Um, do, so what kind of save does he have to make for that? Um, it's a wisdom sa- uh, save against a DC of 14. Yikes. This guy, he keeps rolling 20s. Damn it. He's like, he just He's looks good. at you and he glares. He doesn't think you're funny. Damn. Fine. Anything else you'd like to do, Lanover? Yeah, I'm going to use Misty Step to get behind him. Maybe that'll scare him. Sure. So you Misty Step, there's not really a whole lot of space behind him. So you have to Misty Step on top of like a couple of crates, but you are, so you're a little bit above him and behind him. Um, and. Sure, you can make an intimidation check for me with that boo- that poof of, of magic energy as you appear behind him out of nowhere. So do I say anything or do I just, am I just looking at him in a scary you can way? say something, why not? I don't care. He's going to say, there's nowhere for you to run. Oh, he got an eight that time. Okay, uh, he looks around and then he like shakily like just drops his weapon. He's like, please, please don't hurt me. Oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> You people are crazy. Um, Miles, what would you like to do? All right. So what's the situation? Is that one guy still kind of... He has thrown his weapon down on the ground and is looking terrified at Lanover, who's behind him. Okay. And everyone else is kind of grappled? Yes, by the vines. All right. I want to, I guess, talk to the drug dealer guy. Just go... I'll kind of make my way straight over to him and grab him by the collar and just say, where's the prince? Sure. So you grab him and he winces because he saw that that headbutt and he's like, the the prince? Can I tell? Does he look genuinely surprised? Make an insight check. (laughs) Seven. I have no insight. <laughs> can any? Yeah, of I the- trust everything everyone says. Can- yeah, sure. You guys can all make yeah, an insight cool, check. Cool, cool. I got a one. Uh, Eighteen. Nineteen. Okay. Um. So Lanny and and Elias are like he doesn't know anything. Whoops! Wrong room. Uh. Yeah. Whoops. Uh. But both uh, Ferris and Hilrana pick up on. On a sense that he probably is not telling the truth. Tisk, tisk. So we're currently out of combat. None of them are going to attack you. So you, we can now talk. They're still entangled by those vines for I'm not sure how long. They're not going to actively try to get out of them yet. I will look over at Ferris because I kind of i am starting to trust her judgment on people. Do I let him go? Kind of that kind of look. She is going to roll her eyes and shake her head. No, I will. Can I I, can I try to um, intimidate him a little bit more? Yeah. What do you want to say? I don't want to say anything. I just want to like kind of grab the collar a little bit more. So maybe it's choking him just a little bit and just be like, are you sure you don't know where the prince is? Yeah, you can definitely make an intimidation check with advantage because this is a terrifying situation. A little light uh, choking. <laughs> Maybe 14. that's what he's into, though. Yeah. Um, fourteen. He starts to shake a little bit. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't take him. I, I, they have him back in the other room, but I, I don't have anything to do with that. It's not my business. It's not my, not my place. You, you can go back there. It's, it's, it's the, the, the big office at the back. Just please let us go, please. I don't. Wh- <sighs> Why don't you take us there? Uh, go ahead oh god uh, it's your business now take us uh, um so he's going to lead you guys out into the hallway a couple people have were in the bathroom and look in the room and they're like huh oh, and then just go back into the the dance area but no one seems too perturbed by it. And he leads you down further down the hallway. It winds a little bit and then goes up a set of stairs into an upper office where, again, there is a doorway that is closed. And he knocks on it and he's like, 
we we have some visitors that want to talk to you, Al. And he tries to like move to 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 scurry back down the stairs away from you guys. I'm gonna grab him if I can. Sure, make an athletics check for me. Is the prince still with us? Yeah, he's following you. Okay. It's very ter- he's like in shock. His eyes are just like, what is going on? So uh, athletics check from you, Miles. Yeah, I rolled a twelve. Uh, it's fine. You you grab him by the arms and by the shoulders. He's a, a not a, a, that big of a guy, and you just kind of hold him in place. The door does not open after he says those things. I look at him and I say, why do you tell them that we were here? Get the door open. I, I don't have the key. I don't know how to get it open. You guys wanted me to bring you up here. Miles, can you get the door open? As you say that, the door swings open and... What is the order of where you guys are standing? Miles, I think, is probably at the front with this guy that tried to turn around. Then who is after him up these up this staircase? I'm right behind Miles. I'm in the back with the prince because I don't want the prince to like run off on us. I need for Miles and uh, Ferris to tell me what their armor class is. 18. 12. Okay, um, so Miles, you you see as uh, two crossbow bolts go like shooting out the door from the doorway at you, as you see a line of, of four people with crossbows aimed at the door. One of them does sink into you, and so it does do some damage. The other one goes wide, and Ferris, two crossbow bolts uh, hit right into you. Oh, jeez. So let me go ahead and roll some crossbow damage. So, Miles, you are going to take five points of piercing damage as the crossbow bolt pierces into your arm. And Ferris, you are going to take eight points of piercing damage. How are you doing? She's still standing. Good, okay. (laughs) I'm so worried about first level characters. It's so terrifying. (laughs) Uh, Now we can do some initiative. 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 I got a 15. 12. 12. I see that Helrana got a 19. And Miles, what did you get? 17. Let us begin. How many combatants can we see? Uh, you're towards the bottom of the stairs, so I think that you could probably only see like four okay. people through the doorway. You don't know if there's anybody else behind them or not from your vantage point. And same thing for Hilrana, because you're behind both Miles and Ferris. You'd have to push past them up the stairs and look into the room to be able to see where they are. Again, their initiative was quite terrible, so it's going to be Hil- Hilrana at the beginning. How close am I to the nearest person? They're five or ten feet from the actual doorway, so you're about 15 to 20 feet away from the closest person. Well, I guess I'll just do a good old dagger attack. Okay, so you're going to run up the stairs and push past Miles and Ferris and go up and try to stab the first person in the room that you see with a dagger. Yes. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and roll an attack for me. Seven, so ten. Okay, so ten to hit. Um, That unfortunately does not pierce through their leather armor. Miles. You have this guy in your hands. You got grazed by this crossbow. Uh, Ferris next to you is hit pretty bad. And there are four people with crossbows in the room. And you see one other person um, behind them from your vantage point sitting behind a desk. All right. I don't know if this is possible, but could I throw the drug dealer I have in my hands Mm -hmm. at the people hoping to kind of... (laughs) Make them knock them down. Fall. Yeah, absolutely. You probably would also knock into Hilrana, um, but if you if that's fine with you, then go for it. I want you to make like an attack roll and use your like your strength modifier. I'm gonna say you don't have proficiency with throwing dudes unless you can give me a reason why you have proficiency <laughs> with that. I feel like he would personally, but <laughs> think, like from bar fights or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, feel like I he's think that was part of, of my backstory. <laughs> By throwing right. people. I'll allow yeah. it. You're proficient in throwing people into other people. So you can <laughs> you can add you can add what you normally add to like your attack uh with your with your sword. So it'd be your strength modifier plus your proficiency modifier. We're gonna do it not for damage though, we're gonna do it to see if you knock if you're able to throw him 
with an accuracy in order to knock these people over. 18? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Helrana, if you would like to make like a strength save for me as this man's body comes... Actually, no, I'll, I'll let it be a deck save um, to try to duck out of the way of this man being chucked across the room. 18. You're able to dodge out of the way and not get hit. Yeah, I like duck down really fast like... Ugh. This sparkling drug dealer body being flown <laughs> through the room, smacking into these four people with crossbows, knocking them over like bowling pins. The four of them plus the drug dealer are all in a pile on the ground. Whenever you you are at the bottom of the stairs, Asono is in front of you a little bit, um, but you heard the oh! noise that Melee's made as he chucked this man into the room and the sound of bodies uh, falling down. All right, I'm going to... Go up the stairs. Did I see Ferris and um, Miles get hurt? Oh yeah, you definitely saw them get hit by uh, the crossbows. Especially Ferris got took the 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 brunt of it. I'm going to touch Ferris's shoulder, and I'm humming a very soothing song, and I cast Cure Wounds. Thank you. And she's healed for seven points of damage. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And if I have any remaining movement, I am going to, like, scoot to the side of the doorway so I can't get shot. Ferris, uh, you have been healed by the lovely touch of Lanover, um, and you saw Melee's chuck this guy into the room. What would you like to do? So let's say if I used my movement to step a little bit into the room, would everyone in the room be within a 10-foot cube of me? It wouldn't cover the entire room, um, but you could position yourself in a way that it would get everybody. Um, unfortunately, it probably would also get Helrana. Oh, that's okay. She'll forgive me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I am going to um, use Fey Presence. Ooh. So each creature within a 10-foot cube of me must make a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of me until my next turn. Ooh, very spooky lady. Um, okay, so wisdom save. And what is the DC for that save? 15. 15. Damn. She's kind of pissed. She got crossbowed. Uh, Helvana got a four. I keep rolling sevens. Okay, so everyone seems frightened except for the person at the desk. They look at you with a glare. So now it is the turn of the bandits, or whatever the hell you want to call them, uh, actors. Who knows? Um, on the floor in a pile. Uh, the first one is going to stand up and then try to pull out their scimitar because now they're in melee range and they're going to try to hack at one of them. This one's going to try to hack at Helrana. What's your armor? I need to know what your armor class is. Oh, my armor class is a 14. Yeah, the, they do not hit you with their scimitar attack. Another one gets up i'm gonna say that they're all they all stand up um the guy that was sparkling tries to go and dart and hide in the corner he does not want any to have anything to do with this there's f three more that are going to do attacks one is going to do one on you um and then the other one the other two are going to go up and try to attack melees so this uh succeeded on their attack even with disadvantage and then melees what's your armor class again 18 yeah 18 okay so the first one, he's not able to hit you. Second one is not able to hit you. So only one of them hits and they're they're hitting Hilvrana. Okay, uh, two points of slashing damage, Hilvrana, as the scimitar just slices into you, cutting your dress a little bit. And then the person at the desk uh, stands up and surveys the situation. You can see that standing up, they're not any taller than they would have been sitting in the chair. Um, it is a gnomish woman. And she looks around and she says with a surprisingly loud voice, you all better stand down if you want your precious prince and princess. Where are they? Are you guys doing anything to, to show that you are not going to immediately attack? I'm still hiding, so I'm not changing anything. I'm still ready to attack, but I want to hear what she has to say. Okay, so we're pausing the initiative for a moment. I have them. I won't tell you where they are until I get what I was promised for the job of kidnapping them. What were you promised and by whom? I was told that the princess would give me the heart stone or one of her relatives would give me the heart stone in exchange for her freedom. However, she claims that no such thing exists and I want 
it now, or I shall become very angry. I will not be afraid to use force. You wouldn't want your precious bride and groom to be looking unwell or harmed for their wedding tomorrow, would you? Hang on. I'm going to go back and talk to Sono. Sono is down at the bottom of the stairs, just like looking aghast at what's happening. Um, he hasn't entered the room or anything. I'm going to stomp over to him. What? What's going on? Oh my god, are you okay? You just got shot. Yeah, look, I'm fine. So you're apparently your sister told this lady in here something about a heart of stone or a stone heart or she'd give her a heart of something anyway what the hell is she talking about oh you mean like that was the that was supposed to be like part of the 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 role play was that like they they kid they were kidnapped because they were supposed to have the heart stone and then i uh then um they would be released once the person was given the heart stone but really they were supposed to be able to like uh overcome their captors and get free uh is that not what's happening they want a, a heart stone i don't have a heart stone no kidding this idiot thinks it's real and she's not going to let him go until she gets something that looks like a heart that's a stone. So you better think fast. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't have anything with me. I don't know. Oh, my God. Is that, he starts to rush up the stairs into the room. Don't go in the room. And he's he's like, what, what's going on? What are you doing? What? This was not part of the deal. What, what are you doing? I want my sister back now. Hilrana just starts a slow clap looking at him like, wow, good job. I told you that this wasn't safe. This was not what I hired you to do. And he says to, to the woman, and he's like, I didn't hire you at all. Who the hell are you? And she's like, I'm Big Al. Now, give me the heart stone or I will do some damage to your pretty princess and prince. Or maybe even they just won't show up for tomorrow's wedding. I am clutching my forehead and um, <laughs> feeling just apprehensive. Okay, perfect. Gonna ask uh, Big Al. So who who do you, who did hire you? Uh, some idiot was talking about how they were gonna kidnap the princess and get this heart stone, and I thought that'd be a good opportunity for me and my gang. They're a bunch of idiots. They wouldn't have done a good job anyway. Oh, I see the problem here. This was all like role play and you thought it was real. What do you mean? It's real. I have the prince and princess. If I don't get this heartstone, I will harm them. That's not role play, sweetie. Okay, you're not role playing, but everyone else is. What? Yeah, th this is like a fun thing to do before they get married they're pretending to get kidnapped it's a whole scenario they worked out that's why those guys got hired they're actors they're pretending to kidnap them make a persuasion check for me Hilrana. nine she looks at you and she's like that's the dumbest shit i've ever heard in my life i know that's what i've been saying this whole time you mean, oh my, I spent all this time doing this shit and it was supposed to be a game? Yes. She just does the world's biggest face palm and sits back down on her desk and she like looks at the guys that are um down on the floor and she's like, just get out of here. I can, I'll handle this. And they all stand up sheepishly and, and head out. Well, I appreciate that this was some dumb rich person game. I still need to be paid something. Oh, no problem. I'm sure pr the Prince Sonos can uh, compensate you for your trouble. It's at this point where you see somebody else in a similar garb come running up the stairs, look at all of you, and move his way past. And he's like, Al, Al, they told me. They gave me the stone. They gave me the heart stone. Um, and, and she's like, what? And he, he comes and he takes out this box that looks very familiar to Miles and Ferris. Um, particularly Miles, and he's like, yeah, they gave it to me. They said this was the precious treasure that um, was supposed to be like their wedding present. And um, the prince said it was. So I, I mean, I assume that this is like 
what it is. So I got it for you. They gave it up. So we can let them go now, right? And he gives her the box. Wait, I, I thought this was like, this was all role play. I, I, I am so confused now. There, there is a heartstone. And she opens the box, and inside, um, Miles and Ferris see a familiar thing, but uh, it's new to Hilvrana and Lanover. It is a onyx uh, butt plug <laughs> with a bunch of very smooth gems set inside of it. Um, and she looks at it, and she's just like, what the fuck is... Absolutely, that is the heartstone, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, you say this poking your head out of the corner. Uh, make a persuasion check with disadvantage, unless somebody wants to do so something to help you to convince her that this is the heartstone and that Hilrana was lying. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be like, holy moly, there it is! <laughs> there it is, the heartstone. <laughs> holy moly! <laughs> oh yes, the the heartstone. Just as just as we've heard it described. Am I still rolling with this advantage? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say that's those are both pretty weak, but it was <laughs> she's very confused. So I'll say you can roll just a straight roll. Okay, cool. I get an 18. She looks and she's like, Ugh. You almost had me going with that role play thing. You're a really good actor. Well, I guess we have it. Doesn't look as valuable as I would have hoped. Rude. <sighs> these royals are a bunch of fucking weirdos and she closes the box and she's like let just let him go um i don't want to ever see any of your faces here again that's fine no problem big al uh you guys see behind you down the stairs trying he's like caught between laughing and crying is sono and he's just like so confused and relieved that this is going to be okay. They lead you back down the stairs, have uh, Sono follow them, and you guys can go as well, to a smaller storeroom. And inside, they unlock the door and you see behind it Princess Celeste, which some of you recognize, some of you don't, looking a little bit like bedraggled and not hurt or anything, but she has like Looks like she picked a stone up off the ground and she's like getting ready to hit whoever comes through the door in the face. And Prince Grant has like his eyes shut, but he's also kind of in this like readied position. And the guy's like, you're free to go. And and she's, she was about to hit him and she just like stops and then she sees Sono and she sees uh, the rest of you guys, the ones that she recognizes, she kind of drops the stone, collapses a little bit, just like with relief. Oh, you guys came for, you came for me. I can't I can't believe this is this is crazy. They kidnapped us. They they kidnapped Grant. She's like, Grant, you can get up. It's okay, Grant. And and he was like, he's still closing his eyes and he's like, What? Is 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 everything okay now? Did that work? Is that the did it work? And she's like, Yeah. You're like, why don't you just open your eyes? And he's like, No, it's tradition. I'm not supposed to see you. They told me I wasn't supposed to. He puts his hands over his eyes. I'm gonna ask him if he's okay. Oh, Ferris, Ferris, I, I can, uh, I mean, this was terrible. This is, what the fuck is going on? Well, it seems like your soon-to-be brother-in-law decided to help you along with your role-playing. Thank God you kept your paperweight. My role-playing? Oh, yeah, I mean, I told him that that was this whatever the fuck this heartstone was, but... You mean this was all Sono's fault? And he like, if he could glare through closed eyes, he would. And what he thinks is the direction is Sono, but he's really looking at a wall. He's like, whips his head over and then, and like, uh, Celeste directs his head over towards where uh, Sono is. And she's like, I cannot fucking believe that you did this, brother. What is wrong with you? I just wanted you guys to see each other. I knew you really wanted to see him. I was really worried about the fact that you were getting married tomorrow and you hadn't seen him in years. And I just, I wanted to help you. And he looks extremely sheepish. Um, and she goes up and she just like slaps him across the face and then gives him like a hug. Um, this is just kind of shaking his head. I feel like, you know, those are very hard to come by. I don't have a backup one. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully you got some use out of it. <laughs> uh, so looks at you all and he's like, so you guys ready to party? I'm going home. Yes. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at when he says when uh, Vila says yes, he's like, "All oh, right," and then Lanifer and she's like, and Celeste's like, "We're just gonna go home. This is this has been ruined." I I I believe I haven't met some of you all, um, but I greatly appreciate your assistance in getting me out of this terrible situation. I would love to return the favor to you all. I don't know if perhaps you'd be interested in in attending tomorrow's ceremony. You've done so much to to make sure that it's going to happen. Oh, I would love to. Thank you. I would love to too. Um, also. I my name's Silrana and I actually came here. Your aunt was really worried about you, so I'm here to escort you back home. Oh, you're not Lady Amber? No, funny thing. There was a mail mix up. Uh, I got Lady Amber's invitation. I thought it'd be fun to just uh, crash the party, um, but then I kind of felt bad when you got kidnapped and uh, uh, told your aunt that I would help to make amends. She just blinks at you. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, sure, no problem, no problem, Hilvrana. You're you're welcome. You all are are welcome tomorrow. Hopefully, it will go a little bit more smoothly than this evening. I I must thank you, Miles. I, while I was somewhat shocked by your gift, it really was what truly saved me and helped me with my with my marriage. Of course, and if you need, uh. Another one, I have a guy. It can continue to bring you two together throughout the marriage. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I, 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 will, I will let you know if I, if I, if I need anything. Um, um, I, I, think I'm go- I think I'm good. I think I'm good. You guys can finish off your evening whether you want to stay and hang out or go home and just cleanse yourself of the nonsense that happened this evening. But tomorrow... It's the wedding, you guys, and you have an invitation. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the second episode of Roll for Romance. When we recorded the first few episodes, our audio setup was less than ideal, as I'm sure you can tell from listening to them. However, there's good news, and that is we were able to switch over to a different audio setup and actually be able to start recording together. So you will notice, hopefully over the next couple of episodes, the audio quality will begin to get better and make the whole thing much more enjoyable of an audio experience. And thank you so much for hanging in there with us while we figure this stuff out. If you feel so inclined, please share this podcast with your friends, or maybe even your lovers. Our theme song is Neon Laser Horizon by Kevin McLeod, and information about that track and all of the music used in today's episode can be found in the episode notes. Thanks again for listening.